In previous class, we have studied about connectives like and or and not. And also we have solved some examples. And I know you found it boring because making truth table is such time taking process. But do not worry. There is no need to make truth tables for the big expressions because we can simplify those expression using trick. And what is the trick? This trick is nothing but loss. And in today's class, we are going to study all the loss. Okay, so 1.3 algebra of propositions, which helps us to simplify the expressions without making the truth table. And this loss comes in pair. So now you may have questions, sir, what does this mean? It simply means the law remains same if you replace and with or. If you replace T by F, the law remains same. It is not changed. We'll get more clarity while explaining the loss. Don't worry about that. Okay. Now, point number three is this laws are not unique. You have already studied them where in Boolean algebra, in probability concepts, even in matrices. Okay. Let us see one by one every law. First law is idempotent law. Do you remember idempotent matrix? A square is A. Similarly, in the propositions, we say P or P is P. And P and P is also P. Have you seen the magic? If I replace or with and, the law remains same. This is what the point number two was. All the laws comes in pair. If you replace and by or 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 by and, the law remain same. Now, sir, how to remember this? To remember this, I have some tricks. I Dempotent, Ditto Pokemon. Do you remember Ditto Pokemon? What he used to do? He used to copy the another Pokemon. Similarly, you can see the copy is going on, right? So how to remember it? I Dempotent, it is nothing but Ditto Pokemon copies himself. And secondly, it's very, very critical for the examples you have to remember the laws from left to right and also from right to left suppose somewhere i have expression which says p then you should know that p can be written as p or p or maybe it is written as p and p so that i can use that step for further simplification of my expression so remember this laws from left to right and also from right to left because it will help you in the simplification understood let us go to the next law associative law associative means groupism this is how i remember what is associative associative means even if you do groupism the law remains same so now what does this mean it's very simple suppose i have p or q or r then if i place a bracket here what it says is first perform this operation p or q after finding this result then you do or with r and get your answer this answer is same with this answer p or q or r just do a groupism with different player okay shifting the bracket bracket is now here i made group of q r first so solve this q or r then do your further operation p or that bracket and you will find that lhs is rhs the answer is not changing this is what groupism looks like the answer remains same you may group with anyone understood same thing we have seen in the matrices also right. now i told you about the duality power what is the duality replace or with and the law remains same so if i replace or with and the law remains same the groupism remains same okay comes the third law which is commutative law what is commutate commute means travel so basically here we are going to say that even if you change the position if positions are changed still lhs is rhs check it out p or q now take q first p to the last still both of them are same this is commutative law position change won't change the answer answer is still same and then you can also see for the and p and q equal to q and p understood the third law going to the fourth law distributive law you have to just distribute check it out p or q and r so q and r are in a bracket and you want to do what p or of this bracket so distribute it distribute it p or q then and p or r see this is what our result looks like p or q and p or r understood you can try here also same goes for the and also see p and q or r so p and q then 
or is outside then p and r this is our distributive law next law is identity law now this is very simple to remember because the logic is whatever is the input will be the output check it out p or f is what p is the input p would be the output why so you can check it out dash or f if i substitute here t then t or f is what t suppose if i substitute f here then f or f is what f so whatever is the input output is same to same so input is becoming output understood dash or f is dash which means p or f is p similarly duality what it says replace or with and and if f is present replace that with t then the law remains same check it out p and t is p how come p and t how come it is p check it out if i substitute t here t and t t what if i substitute f here f and t is f so whatever is the input it is becoming output understood the identity law simple to remember input is output going to the next law sixth law is complement law it's no brainer p or complement of p answer is t why so because uh, in this operation at least uh, this or this would be t so if at least one of them is t then the outcome would be t what about here here p and complement of p is what it is false how come because here at least one of them would be f if at least one of them is f then the outcome is f clear that is our complement law and here also you can see the complement of t is f complement of f is t next we have is de morgan's law de morgan's law you have studied in probability also in probability how you studied de morgan's law that uh, probability of uh, a union b the whole bar is equal to probability of a bar into probability of b bar same thing i have written here but in terms of the prepositions concept now see carefully this thing how it is behaving similarly you can comment here a union b the whole bar what is the result a bar b bar and then this union is changed to multiplication now check our law okay negation is nothing but bar p or q so a union b so here p or q the answer would be what negation of p negation of q and or is changed to multiplication which is and easy similarly you can generate the next one negation of p and q is what negation p or negation q using the d morgan's law in gate exam you may convert uh, your preposition questions into the boolean format or the probability format it depends on you and you can take help of that simplification to get the answer not necessary that you have to write in this way only but for the gate exam for the semester exams you got no choice you have to follow this operations only coming to the next law domination law so what is domination domination means you do whatever but i would be the output only if i am i am present in the input i would be the output only because i am dominating that expression check it out p or t the result is t t is dominator here p and f the resultant is f i am the domination i won't change i am there in input i will be there in output sir this is uh, somewhat like similar to identity law input is becoming output but here there was a change if p is t then output is t if p is f the output is f in domination he is not changing he is static if i am t then the output is t if my input is f my output is f check it out and why does it work because in or if at least one of them is t then the output is t and in and both of them should be t then only the output is t otherwise the output is false so in and if one of them is false then 2t is not possible for t outcome so the outcome would be always false understood this is your domination law coming to the last law which is a special law because it is not following the duality property what is it it is involution law uh, which is uh, also known as double negation law in rosen book which is famous for discrete mathematics it is written as double negation law so negation of negation p is p a bar the whole bar was a in probability here also negation of negation p is p 
I hope you understood every law because this laws we are going to use to simplify the big big expression. So let me give you a recall. It's a no brainer. It's very easy. Just understand the keywords. Idempotent law. It's a ditto Pokemon. What it does? Same same. P or P is P. P and P is P. Second, associative law, groupism. Even if you do the groupism, LHS is RHS. Commutative law. Even if you change, interchange the position, answer remains same. Right. Then distribution law, distribute. It's no brainer. It's easy. Identity law. Whatever is input will be the output. P or F is P, and similarly P and T is P. How to remember the second one? I told you the trick. Or is replaced with and F is replaced with T, and you get the second formula of the identity law. Comes the next complement law. No brainer again. P or complement of P is T. P and complement of P is F. It, if you remember the first one, second is automatically remembered. Why? Because or is changed with and T is replaced with F. De Morgan's law is same as we studied in the probability and Boolean algebra. So there is no issue there. Domination law, static input. That is the only output. Static input. That is the only output. So P or T is T. P and F is F. comes the involution law which is nothing but double complement so complement of complement p is p i hope you remembered every law now with my tricks so let us see example example 1 prove that p or p and q is p so how will you prove this sir it seems sir difficult because at the very first instance we do not know what to do see the lhs is p or p and q so you might be thinking of distributive law right but distributive law is not helping us here why let us see so distribute p or p p or p then we have and p or q so p or q right so what's next uh, p or p sir we have seen the first law idempotent law ditto pokemon so the answer is p and we have p or q what will you do now if you do distributive again you will land up here so sir there is no point of distributive law then i cannot solve this question using this technique think of something else i told you do you remember my first slide what i told you you have to remember things from rhs to lhs also i have made star because it will help you to simplify expression in the right way so now think in that manner <clears throat> what to do what to do i have p here so i can say p as p or p it is not helping us we have seen that format but i can write this p as p and t you have seen in the identity law that p can be replaced as p and t so if i use the identity law will there be any benefit let us see p is replaced with p and t how i replaced it was using the identity law now what's next sir it seems like this is uh, the answer of the distributive law right doesn't it seem like that that our distributive law rhs was looking like this check it out p or q and p or r so rhs to lhs can i write in this way p or q and r see carefully can i convert this my my distributive law format to the lhs version by saying this is p and p and is common so take it outside what is uncommon keep that in bracket so t or q is uncommon take that to the bracket let me repeat what i did p and p and was common took it outside what was uncommon now t or q so t or q uncommon is inside the bracket now so this is nothing but my distributive law in the reverse format so both of the thing identity law and distributive law i am using in the reverse format to solve my expression can you see now what's next sir t or q if at least one of them is true the result is true this is domination yes this is domination in the or if at least one of them is true the result is true so domination law domination law 
in semester exam you have to write uh, every law which you have used in the steps in the gate exam no one will ask you can just straight forward skip to the next step right what about p and t p and t depends on the input if input is t output would be t if input is f output would be f so this is nothing but our identity law so finally now we can say that lhs is equal to rhs and also we have seen that the laws which we have studied not necessarily we are going to use only from lhs to rhs sometimes we have to think in the reverse form rhs to lhs to simplify the expression and to arrive at the answer easy enough understood at start it might feel difficult but once you start solving the questions it feels easy okay there is a note for you this is not some random example this is actually a derived law yes what we have studied earlier was not derived that was a primary necessity loss now this is a derived law absorption law absorption law is nothing but p or p and q is p it has absorbed everything and input became the output similarly if you replace or with and and with or the law remains the same this is absorption law let us go to the next example now, now there is not uh, some more laws laws are over the necessity law and the derived law now you have uh, the example which is uh, negation of p or bracket negation p and q is what you have to simplify this sir uh, it feels difficult at start it feels difficult but once you are into the habit then it seems easy see what you can see is bracket suppose this is our proposition b and this is our proposition a so a or b is there right a or b and negation outside sir negation of a or b d morgan's law can be used negation a and negation b c this is how you have to think now okay do not get stressed with the expression think in a very simple terms so de morgan's law can be used and it can be said as negation p and negation of the bracket this was using the de morgan's law what's next what's next is this thing sir here also we have something like negation of x and y so negation of x and y again de morgan's law can be used and can be said as negation x or negation y correct so use de morgan's law again and say negation p and here de morgan will give us negation of the first proposition then or negation of the second proposition using the same concept which was oops using the de morgan's law let us investigate further sir this is somewhat like a double negation law yes it is a double negation law what it says negation of negation p is just p understood so now uh, do not forget this line came by doing the operation which was which law double negation law double negation law don't worry i will address all your doubts also i know it very well where doubts can arise now what's next what can we do sir it feels like we have a and b or c distributive law can be used a and b then we have or a and c a and c can we use the distributive law absolutely use the distributive law and say negation p and p or negation p and q understood so distribution law is applied now we can say negation p and p is what sir this is complement law as per the complement law here one of them would be false so the result would be false correct and then we have negation p and q we have used the complement law let us uh, investigate further what can be simplified what cannot be simplified so here we can see here we can see sarji f or f or some preposition q f or some preposition q is nothing but q because this will be 
uh, identity law if q is t then the resultant is t if q is f resultant is f input is becoming output therefore identity law understood so what is the answer here the answer is negation p and q with the help of the identity law that's all this is what we can do the ultimate simplification further we cannot simplify understood how to simplify using the laws now you got the confidence how to apply the laws and get the answer yes that's it for 1.3